mic. Uh, and so I want to go back to, I'm not going to go too far back, I'm just going back to 1971. Um, who was around for this? Okay, cool. Not 71, okay. I was using the key punch machine. Right, hold on. Um, and so uh, I want to go back to Vim's humble beginnings and how we got here. So I'm going to start with Ed. Uh, Ed is named because it's sh uh, such because it's short for editor. They needed an editor, so they wrote Ed. Um, this is what it looks like. It was written in 1971 by Thompson, Ken Thompson, uh, with, of course, help from Richie and a bunch of others. They used a PDP 11 to 20, uh, which I'm sure was a fantastic machine. I sadly have only seen one. Um, they were inspired by a program called QED, QED, um, and, uh, and they, they basically re-implemented it and added regular expressions. So this was uh, one of the first, if not the first, use of regular expressions uh, in computer interaction among people. Um, and so I have loaded main.c. It is uh, 32,000 characters long. Uh, you can tell because it says that. Um, Main.c happens to be uh, ed. Uh, and I'll show you line one uh, is, is this. Uh, I'm pulling this from OpenBSD. So this is the first line. And I typed 1p and it printed the first line out. Uh, that was very nice of it. Uh, let's actually see some more. Uh, one ten p So these are the first 10 lines, uh, approximately. Um, for, as you can see, this is the main control user interface for the ed line editor. Cool, so we can, we can see lines. What else can we do? Well, we can append. Uh, so which line am I on? Oh, that's, that's the current thing. We can append. So I enter append mode, and I'll say like, this is some line I am appending. So now I'm done, and I've appended that. And so uh, if, I, if I type dot, it shows me that thing that I just did. Uh, if I type dollar, oh, that jumps to the bottom of the file, sorry. Uh, I'm going to get back up. Uh, and so uh, le line 11 is the line I just entered. So we can see line 10 to 12. Um, and right in the middle there, this is some line I am appending. Fantastic. So we can append things. Um, like I'm, I've been using P to print. And you can see there's this little language where I can say 10 comma 12 print and it prints lines 10 through 12. I could say 10 comma 12 n, and it prints them but with uh, line numbers in front, which is pretty handy. Uh, I recommend line numbers. But there's more you can do. I mentioned uh, I mentioned regular expressions. Um, so let's take line 10 and run a regular expression with a substitution on it. So I can type S. Can you see down here? Is this too far down? Yeah, okay, great. Uh, substitute, uh, I'm going to uh, substitute and use uh, with and love. So I've typed 10S slash and use slash and love slash. And when I press enter, it does it. And, and I know this because it's awesome, and it clearly did it. Uh, but if I, if I don't trust the machine, I can print out, uh, and so I can see that redistribution and love in source and binary forms are permitted. Um, uh, so you may be wondering why. Um, and so you are looking at this on a projector screen from my computer, in 2015, where we have all sorts of fancy technologies like LCD screens. In 1971, they had printers, and you would type things into a terminal, uh, and it would print out uh, either onto a screen if you were rich, or onto an actual printer uh, if you were not a billionaire um, or university. Uh, it's teletype, yeah. Yeah, it's yes, teletype, yes. Yes. TTY. A TTY, uh, a teletype printer. Um, and so, they're kind of noisy, they're kind of slow. Um, so it doesn't have to print everything all the time. The refresh rate is not instant, um, to say the least. And so this was what they had. They wanted to see things line by line and in this kind of speed. Um, well, that's all the teletype printers do. Indeed. Right, it could print out. 
like 20, 20 lines, and then you'd make a modification and it would print out the next 20 lines. Uh, but that's not very good. So this is, this is what a teletype printer does. Um, more about regular expressions. Uh, one of my favorite uh, ed commands uh, is, is G. It takes a regular expression. So I'll just type RE uh, for regular expression. And then it takes some action. Uh, and I'm going to use the print action. And what this does is this will print out to the screen any line matching this regular expression. Uh, so they took this and they made a command uh, line version out of this. I forgot what they called it. Uh, and so these are all the lines matching uh, the RE regular expression. Um, there are some other commands you may recognize, like W uh, and Q. So that's ed. Uh, and so that was 1971. Um, let's. Uh, time travel a little bit to 1976, uh, five years into the future. Uh, Bill Joy was inspired by lots of things, I assume cocaine. Uh, uh, and he was also inspired by the editors Bravo and M, uh, which existed uh, elsewhere in the Unix computer verse. Um, M e M was his biggest inspiration by someone named George Coleris. I just learned that uh, yesterday. Uh, I had not heard of him before. Um, and so, but he's also very heavily inspired by Ed. And he came up with a program called X um, for extended editor. Uh, I'm going to run Nex, which is a, the most correct clone of it. Um, so X is, is the thing. No, don't correct. Great. OK. And so now you see, look how like, the extension is, is very exciting, right? So it tells you the file name. It tells you it's not modified. It tells you what line, how many lines there are. Uh, X is super exciting, right? This is a, this is a major advancement. Uh, it added all sorts of cool things, like abbreviations. So I can abbreviate uh, te to th. And then when I enter a pen mode, and look at this colon he added. Brilliant. I know when I'm in a pen mode and when I'm not. Um, uh, the penguins. Um, and if I want to print out that line, it, the abbreviation totally did not work. Maybe it goes the other way. I apologize. I got that backwards. Um, also added the map command, um, which uh, you can use to map uh, key bindings, essentially. Uh, this introduced something called mark, marks, which we just learned about. Uh, but you may be thinking, how are you going to jump to the line? Uh, there's no GUI. So I'm going to, I'm gonna, I'll go to line 80 or so. Oh, that looks, that looks important. Uh, so I'm going to mark that <laughs> into A. So now, uh, let's jump uh, to 90. Right, so this is line 90. Um, oh, and, and you may have noticed uh, that it is automatically printing the line as I go there, right? Uh, that's a setting you can toggle. It added settings. Um, and so now I'm going to jump back to A, which we've seen before. Okay, let's go to the end. Uh, and then let's, uh, so, the thing with marks is that uh, they are just like the line numbers that I was doing earlier, right? So I said like one comma 10, and that's a range. You can also say A, and that is a line number as well. So I'm going to delete line A. So that's a quote A followed by D. It's gone, uh, I swear. The line was deleted. See, it, look how helpful this is. Um, so massive improvements there. Uh, X also added something called tags. Uh, and you may have seen this elsewhere uh, outside of X uh, in recent years. Um, I sadly don't have a tags file built for this. But uh, you, it's basically built a big index of, uh, of your file. And you can jump to, say, tag main. And it would jump to the main definition, the definition of the main function. 
Sadly, I don't have a tags file, so this doesn't work. Again, error messages. This is so good. Um, so as the years progressed, in about 1978-ish, uh, uh, Bill Joy added, uh, he hit the university he was at, upgraded their, uh, their TTYs and their, their terminals. Um, and so he added a command called VI, uh, which would show uh, a, a representation of what X was looking at. And so if you run this VI command from within here, it opens it into this mode. Uh, and he added extra key bindings, so like J and K, which, uh, which he took directly from his keyboard, which had, I don't know if you've seen the keyboard Bill Joy used, but uh, the, the J key had a down arrow on it, and the K key had an up arrow on it. Uh, he also added modes, uh, and so this is just normal mode, but you can also enter insert mode. It does not tell you whether you're in insert mode, but once I've entered, I can type hello, and then I can hit escape, and it leaves insert mode, right? And so he added that. He picked escape because it was right next to the letter Q, and it was really close by. <laughs> that keyboard was made and used approximately once, uh, <laughs> leaving all those keys rather worthless. Um, one of my favorite quotes from him was, uh, one of the good things about Emacs, though, is its programmability and the modelessness. These are two ideas which never even occurred to me. Uh, that is uh, Bill Joy uh, just before switching to Emacs. <laughs> Except now people exist. Yeah, well, yes. Um, and so in 1978, which is the 2.0 release of X, he turned uh, VI into a full command and not just a subcommand of EX. Um, and so previously, you could. Uh, what's that? Yes. Previously, you could type next dash D, and it would enter a visual mode. But then he added VI as a hard link to X. Um, I have NVI. It's a rewrite. Um, and so here you can see, actually, this is VI. Um, lots of cool stuff here. Uh, yes. Yes, yes, okay, perfect, thank you. Yeah, DT100. Um, the, uh, the console that you use in OS X is an emulator for that terminal, the DT100. Um, Xterm emulates the VT220, how fancy. Um, and so, yeah, that's what, that's what you're using there. Um, so VI and X were, um, were rather popular because Bill Joy also wrote something called BSD. Uh, um, well, he compiled together uh, something called BSD while he was at Berkeley West Coast um, and distributed that under a rather free license. Uh, at the time, it was considered a free license. Um, and he bundled VI and X with that. Um, and AT&T end ended up bundling uh, X with, with their distribution of Unix, which made it rather popular. Um, but it, the license by today's standards was not very open and, uh, and difficult to use and work with and distribute. Uh, and so you can actually legally say these days that, uh, ed, that X and VI were not open source. And in fact, uh, they were open sourced in 2002. So that's when VI became open source. By then, it was too late. Um, VI got many clones, including NVI, which is a complete rewrite open source uh, by a husband and wife team. The, uh, I might get this backwards, but the husband wrote NVI and the wife wrote DB, which was a database uh, library that VI would use for keeping track of marks and registers. Um, she now is a head of some major Unix organization, not POSIX, I forgot what it's called. Um, 
And, but other things that came from it were Elvis, which is just another VI, um, and Stevie, which was an, a VI clone for the Atari ST. Now, we're not going to look at Stevie, uh, because I don't have an Atari ST, but Bram Mulander, uh, uh, which has some Dutch name I can't pronounce, uh, had an Atari ST and an Amiga and other non-PC devices, and he wanted VI, well, he wanted Stevie on his Amiga. So he wrote um, something called BIM um, for the Amiga. Uh, that's what BIM was for. It was VI ported to the Amiga. Um, and here you see all my BIM configuration. I apologize. Uh, and it, unlike NVI, unlike VI, it had things like completion. Uh, so I'll, I'll show you some, some things in case you don't know it. Um, let's, uh, I can type TH, I can hit Control P, and it completes it. So this is new in BIM as opposed to VI. Uh, it extended the regular expression language uh, in very painful ways. Um, but it's Perl compatible regular expressions, which are not compatible with Perl regular expressions. Um, it added a plugin infrastructure, which VI did not have. It added mouse interaction, which uh, Bill Joy was working on. Uh, in fact, Bill Joy, the last time he ever touched VI, uh, was working on uh, you know, a university computer. Uh, and there had been hard drive problems, and they hadn't really been keeping backups well uh, that week. But he, he was fine. He was just working away at his VI. Um, you know, the code's a little messy by this point. It's many, been many years. Uh, and he was adding multiple window support, uh, tabs, essentially. Uh, and, uh, and he was also adding mouse support uh, when the hard drive crashed. Uh, and his thought was, forget this. Uh, <laughs> and uh, looked at other editors. Graham <laughs> uh, added mouse support and multiple window support. Um, syntax highlighting, uh, the undo tree, if you're familiar with that, and so on. And so that is my very brief history of Vim and Ed and how we got here. Are there any comments? Uh, question. I may have missed this, but in terms of build choice for That's right. Was his, in his uh, keyboard, was the escape key like position somewhere else? It was above control and to the left of Q. So it's where a tab is. That's where his escape key was. It's a good mapping. It's a good mapping, yeah. Was it uh, password? Don't tab. Okay. Right. Yeah. What, what's that? Um, okay. Well, thank you for listening.